Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be checking out the Breeze from KBO. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Breeze from KBO. Some of you guys are probably just here for a quick overview of the specs, so let's talk about some of the important ones. Class 2 e bike, 500 watt rear hub motor. 48 volt, 16 amp hour, removable, lockable battery. 30 to 55 miles per charge. Top speed of 20 miles per hour. Fenders and rear rack included. Seven speed Shimano freewheel. And now it's time to dive in. So for those of you that are still here and want to know a little bit more about this bike, that is exactly what we we're going to do. But first, let's start out with an overview of the bike, kind of like something you would use it for, and then also let's talk a little bit about the company. So to talk about the bike, this is a mid-step, high mid-step design. They also have a step-through version of this bike. So if you were somebody who had knee problems, back problems, and can't necessarily make the standover height on this bike, they also have a step-through version available. It comes in two colors. We have this black and orange is also an option. The orange is, it's a pretty cool color orange. Um, at least online, it looks you know very bright, very poppy. So if that's something you're into, big fan of the color orange, they also have that available. Now this bike is designed to be a commuter bike. Uh, it definitely fits in very well with a lot of the bikes that we've seen in this category. So the bike does come stock with both the front and rear fenders, and it also has this rear rack. And those are accessories that you would expect to see on a bike that was supposed to be a commuter bike. Now we do have this very upright seated position, kind of a little bit of an up swoop here on the handlebars, which is really nice. It gives you a really nice, comfortable position to ride in um, where you're pretty much sitting straight up for the most part. We also have the inclusion of these bottle cage bosses right here. The bike does come with a bottle cage, um, but I didn't put it on for this review and in my riding it around, but that does come with the bike and you would install it right here. It seems to be a pretty decent construction. Um, if I was going to have this bike long term, that's probably something I would look to install and probably use on a regular basis, especially if I was going to be out commuting in the heat. You know, we're out here in Corpus Christi and so sometimes it gets hot. It's always humid. And so having a little extra water there is definitely the right call. One of the aspects of this bike, which I really like, is these big tires that we have. Now, they are two and a half inches wide, so it's a little bit thicker than a standard tire and they're 27 and a half inches big. So they have a really nice attack angle. And what that means is if you were going to hit a bump or something like that, because we have these bigger tires, the angle at which they would roll over something that was in their way is a lot less of a steep angle as opposed to if we had 18 inch wheels, 20 inch wheels um, that has a much steeper attack angle and therefore it would be a little bit more jarring. Um, but we've been able to take this over some bumps and some curbs, and it's it's awesome. Uh, we've also got the inclusion of this front fork suspension, and we'll get into all those details. I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of the biggest aspects of this bike and how you might be able to use it in your everyday life. And now let's talk about the company. KBO has their warehouse based out of California, and so all of the shipping to the United States is pretty quick, it's pretty efficient. Um, when I received my box, it all seemed to be perfectly in order, um, minus you know some of the grime and dirt you get from shipping things, but otherwise everything was perfectly safe inside, so it's nice that they pack this thing in a way where it arrives to you the way that they, you know, they intend it to arrive to you. And KBO has a two-year warranty on all of their bikes, which is nice. Um, we've seen some companies, they offer a one-year warranty, which it's always nice to have a warranty, um, but they doubled that, so this is at two years. Definitely not the biggest warranty in the e-bike business, but having a two years opposed to a one year is nice, just a little extra comfort there. So let's talk about the frame and then some of the geometry measurements that we have here. So this frame, similar to pretty much every e-bike we've reviewed, except for the carbon fiber ones, is 6061 aluminum. And this thing weighs in at 60 pounds. Now the battery is just over eight pounds, so about 52, 51 something with, uh, without the battery in there. And that's a pretty reasonable 
weight for a bike like this. You know, we do have a bit of a beefier frame here. Now, one of the things, if you have one of the older models or if you've seen the older models, they used to have the controller box right up here under the down tube. Now, what they've done is they've taken that and they've put it in the back, which I think is an excellent upgrade. Um, not necessarily because of the functionality, but from a looks perspective, if you know you had something else kind of down there, it kind of ruins the geometry, the, the visual that you're getting. And having it back here, you kind of expect there to be stuff in between you know, the seat post tube and the rear tire. So having that back there, I think is an excellent addition and just an upgrade that I'd like to point out from the older model. And then coming back over here to the middle, we have a standover height of 28.5 inches. Now that's pretty tall. Not obviously, no, not the tallest standover height of bikes that we've reviewed, but it's definitely not a step through. And I mentioned that at the beginning, they do have a step through version of this bike. And that is something that I would consider looking at if I thought that the step over height was an issue. Now, if you can get that step over height, the reach here is only 21 and a half inches, which is very doable for most people. Again, giving you that really nice upright riding position. Now, as far as the riders that this is suitable for, um, I believe they give some very standard rider heights on the website. However, because we have these a little bit bigger tires and the standover height is a little bit taller than most other mid-step bikes, I would recommend maybe five, seven to, you know, six, three, six, four. We do have quite the adjustments here on the saddle as well to accommodate our taller riders with a minimum saddle height of 22 inches and a maximum saddle height of 30 inches. So quite a bit of a range that we can get here to still give us that upright riding position and it'd be fairly comfortable. And speaking of comfort, the saddle that we have here is this KBO branded saddle. It's very wide in the back here and it tapers off fairly quickly. Now, when it came for me, I thought that the cant was just a little bit too far back. So I just in mind bringing it forward just a little bit, um, more of a straight up and down ride. But again, that's something you can adjust to you. One of my favorite things about this seat is the inclusion of this handle in the back. So there's this really nice, really big handle that gives you a really good grip on the bike. So if you were going to be maneuvering around and you needed to lift the back tire up, you have a really good solid grip here to do so. And another reason that this ride is so comfortable is we have these big tires, like I'd mentioned, uh, two and a half inches wide. So these are a bigger tire than say a normal bike tire. And they are 27 and a half inches big. So, I mean, again, we talked about the attack angle being really big on these things, and that's going to absorb a lot of the bumps and road malformations that we're going to find. We also have the inclusion of this reflective sidewall stripe, which I'm always a big fan of extra safety features on a bike, especially since this thing is all black, um, which is very cool. It's a very appealing look. However, if we didn't have this and we didn't have reflectors on the pedals and we didn't have the backlight back there, this would be something that may not be safe to ride around at night just because you know it's almost invisible and the tires they also have puncture resistant liner here so these are some pretty beefy pretty nice tires to have on this bike and that's kind of something that you would want to look for in a commuter if you were going to use this as your mode of transport to and from work you would need to uh, you need to trust that these are going to get you there and up here we've got this adjustable front suspension fork now I'm not sure how much deformation we get on these uh, when it came stock, it is a little floaty, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, it's something that these are quick adjust, so you can adjust it to either give you a little bit more cushion, a little bit less cushion. If it were me, I'd probably have a little bit less cushion on there, but again, we got these quick adjustments here so you can adjust it for yourself. And we've got this front light in the front. This thing comes detached in another box, and so you just have to install this. Very simple, just two wires, they kind of clip in there. Um, nothing too horrible. And this actually has a solid aluminum construction to it, so it feels a lot beefier than really most of the other lights that come on e-bikes, especially at this price range. So I'm not sure what the lumens is on this. Uh, probably about the 250, 300 mark, something around there. We don't have the tools to accurately measure it, but it was, fairly bright and riding it around at night was no issue whatsoever. And then we've also got the inclusion of this little reflector here. So even if this wasn't on, we still have that, again, extra nighttime safety feature of having some reflective right here at the bottom. So big fan of this. Um, definitely seems like it's higher quality than some of the other stuff that we've seen. Jumping up into the cockpit, we have got these faux leather ergonomic grips. Now we don't have any locking mechanism here on these things, but they do not move. Like they are on there. I know sometimes we'll mention it like, oh, you know, if we had a locking mechanism, that'd be nice. 
I don't know if you need any um, with at least with the model that I got these are on there they're tight they do not move whatsoever um, so I like that personally I don't know if I would do the faux leather if this was going to be a commuter for me I do have sweaty hands quite often so something that is maybe a little bit more breathable might be something that I would personally look into however the quality on these things seems nice um, and they fit really well in my hands so I mean I'm a big fan of them and then right here on the left hand side behind our grip we've got this little bell this bell seems to be a pretty high quality construction bell um, fairly loud maybe not the loudest bell that we've ever heard but it's definitely something that's going to carry quite a ways we also don't have the inclusion of a horn or anything like that so this is going to be our audible safety feature here now we've got our disc brake levers over here now these are unbranded but they do have the inclusion of this nice little grip. And if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know that I'm a big fan of this. I like to uh, do a lot of fingertip braking. So this is something that is cool. It's mounted pretty flush here. Um, and I like that. That is pretty cool. And those are connected to these discs that we have both in the front and in the rear. And these are all 180 millimeters. So that gives us a lot of surface area for braking. And we'll do a little bit of a braking test later in the ride test portion. All right, so let's go ahead and power this bike on. Now, one thing you have to do is make sure that the battery is on. So there's this power button right here. We're gonna hold this down and the green lights will show up, which is nice because it will also let you know how much battery we have. You know, it's a pretty good estimation. There's only one, two, three, four sections. Right now we're running on three of four and this will always be on. These lights will always be on. I'm not sure if there's a way to turn it on, but that's how you know it's on as you'll see the, uh, the lights there. So we'll pop back up in here to our display and we'll turn the bike on, boom. Now this is gonna show us our pedal assist level. It's gonna show us our speed. It's gonna show us how far we've gone. And then we also have a couple of options where it'll show us our max speed. And it's also gonna show us a few other things as well. So we have the pedal assist over here. Up is to go up, down is to go down. And stock, this bike comes with five levels of pedal assist. So we've got zero, which is off. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, something to note here, the throttle that we have, we've got this twist throttle over here on the right-hand side, paired with our faux leather half grip here. You get the full gambit, the full power of this throttle um, at any level of pedal assist on here, which is nice, because there are some that you can control the max speed of the throttle with the level of pedal assist however with this one you have access to it at any time so if you need to get up and going really quick and then let's say you're just you know hitting around in pedal assist level one or two you can still reach that speed of 20 miles per hour and then you can settle back down to your riding speed with the pedal assist level that you want hey everybody i had a little bit of a technical issue and it looks like we lost the last half of the overview um and that's no bueno. You can't know about half the bike. So we're gonna hop outside again real quick and finish the rest of the overview and then we'll go back to real life and uh, get on with the walk mode, the ride test and all that good stuff. So I really like this shifter. Continuity. <laughs> okay, but seriously, this is the Shimano 7-speed thumb shifter. I always comment on these ones. I do like them. They're super easy, super functional. Um, I've already done a lot of the writing and testing the starter stuff out in my timeline and uh, it functions well everything works really really good so all in all this is a very good shifter for the money and for a bike that we're going to be doing some of these you know commuting and especially with speeds up to you know that 20 22 miles an hour this is a very solid option and that's connected back here to this shimano altus derailleur this bike also comes with a derailleur guard i just didn't have that installed for the purposes of this review so we can basically look at everything and get a good picture of what's going on down here and then right back here, we have got our Shimano Freewheel. Um, again, always good to see the Shimano name on anything. And back here behind that, that is our 500 watt AKM motor. Now this motor, as far as the acceleration goes, is super solid. Um, it, it's not too pop and then doesn't really do anything. Um, it is a very nice, steady acceleration, um, both using pedal assist and using the throttle. One of the things I like about it when I was riding around is sometimes when you switch between throttle and pedal assist on some bikes, there's a little bit of a delay or a jolt. Well, this one is absolutely seamless. So if you are hitting down the throttle and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I want to start pedaling a little bit, you can pedal and there is it's a very seamless transition. 
between using the throttle and then if you let off the throttle you're just seamlessly going into pedal assist so I really like that uh, functions really well because I do that a lot I use throttle and then I'll like oh, I'll pedal for a little bit and it's like oh, I want to use throttle again and so that's something I usually notice because I ride that way as far as noise goes this is very 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 comparable with a lot of the you know buffangs that are at this um, wattage and the halong motors and others that we've tested nothing extraordinary wasn't too loud um, very much exactly what you'd expect from a rear hub motor and then up here we have got these 180 millimeter cranks now we don't have too much of a chain guard from the top perspective so since this is a commuter i might be wearing slacks to work um, nothing that necessarily protects any of the chain grease from getting on my slacks however this is a very solid aluminum construction and so if you were going to hit anything into it i feel like it would be able to take quite a bit of damage before it actually let any damage get to our teeth or the chain itself and then right here we've got these welgo folding pedals um i said it last time this morning when i recorded it the first time i really like these pedals because they seem to be a little bit of a higher quality than most of the welgos that we've seen on some of these bikes um, they're a solid aluminum piece here and we've got reflectors both on the front and the back and it's wider and thinner which is something I usually mention that I like um, having a little bit more foot real estate to work with so if I was gonna have this long term this is probably something I wouldn't switch out I'm really uh, I'm really happy with what they did here and that pretty much covers it for the nuts and the bolts so let's go ahead and grab the key and pop this battery out and we can talk about that all right, so I got the key inserted here. Now, something I really think is cool is that you don't have to lock the battery into place when you put it in for the first time. So with some of the batteries, you have to just kind of double check you put it in there and you locked it all the way because um, the battery will still function because it's still connected to you know the spots it's supposed to be connected to, uh, but you actually didn't lock it in. So with this one, there's no need to worry about that because as soon as you pop it back in here, it locks into place. So you really only need the key to remove it and then you can put it back in and it'll be locked and you're ready to rock and roll. And it has this little carrying handle over here, a little bit of a hinge here. I tried to figure out what sort of mechanism this was and I realized that they have it here um, on this hinge. So it's you know very streamlined with the bike, but you just pop this up and you get a good grip on on the battery. Now the battery installs at a 45 degree angle. So you'll see that there's not anything right here, but then on the back side there is oh about inch and a half, two inches on this side, and the battery actually won't stall at a 45 degree angle. Now that's something where I had to get used to it because it's kind of strange. Like normally it's like you pop it in and it's in there. But this one you kind of put it in, you know, at a 45 degree angle, and then well you guys know how angles work. Um, so let's go ahead and pop it out. We'll just take this with the key and pop this out it's sort of hard to do with one hand there we go all right so it's just going to come out again at that 45 degree angle and you can see there is the bottom part here and then up here is our connection port now when you use the key it's just going to unlock this and then when the battery goes in it just pushes this up and then clicks into place and like I said it's just locked so I really like that a big fan of this and the key is removable always is a plus so this battery is 16 amp hour 48 volts uh, about eight eight and a half pounds um, very solid aluminum construction um, it's paint matched with the rest of the bike so it's a fairly seamless um, battery pack in here you know obviously you can see it it comes up you know just a little bit out here but all in all aesthetically it's a very nice thing to look at um, a couple cool things on this side we have got a USB charging port so let me pop this out and we've got you know a nice USB it's in a nice spot because if you look at this is the top part so the USB is kind of right about here so even though we don't have a USB in the screen that's nothing where you couldn't run a, a very small cord maybe kind of up through here and to connect something if you had something on the handlebars you wanted to charge because a lot of those USB ports you see are maybe towards the bottom or they're kind of down here in some area and that might be a little bit more difficult so I like where this is placed and the housing they have here is very nice it's kind of a more heavy duty um, rubberized material here um, with a lot of the bikes you will see that these maybe be a weak spot where they don't quite fit in and they don't quite sit right and it's kind of like oh well 
However, with this one, it's very nice, it's very flush, uh, and it pops in there perfectly. So I'm a big fan of that, probably one of the nicest battery covers things that I've seen. And we have the charging port down here. Very simple connection port. This is gonna to be towards the bottom of the bike. Again, an excellent placement. And we have our little handle here, as we talked about. And then we have got the readout. So we'll go ahead and turn the battery on, hold this down. And it's gonna give us a quick readout, L being low, H being high. And right now it's on two out of four. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a solid battery, solid construction, solid design. Um, and I like the fact that we have 16 amp hours where you've seen, you know, 12, 13, maybe even 10 on some of these bikes at this price range. But with this one, you know, it's given us 16, almost up to 17, which was one of the um, bigger capacity batteries that we have personally tested. And you pop it back in there and now it's locked in and can't come out. All right, so let's uh, jump back in time and talk about the walk mode. So I was just looking at this bike and going, man, I forgot to talk about the folding mechanism. Because uh, <laughs> I feel like every bike that we've reviewed, the last several of them have been folding bikes. Um, but this bike does not fold. Um, so we're not going to do a folding section on this one. So let's go ahead and talk about the walk mode. We have got the battery powered on down here. We've got the bike powered on. Now to enter the walk mode, all you're going to do is press and hold this down button. And that is going to kick into walk mode. Now, what's nice about this is it is a very easy breezy walk. You see what I did there with the uh, easy breezy? And I like this one, so as soon as you let it go, it stops. So I like that as a safety feature. Some of the bikes, um, you either have to then hold it down again for a while, or you know, you utilize the brakes to kill off the motor. Um, but with this one, there is no cruise control on the walk mode. So basically, you just hold it down, and as soon as it goes, we're going, we're rolling. And we'll go ahead and let it go. And it is off. And that's pretty much the walk mode. Um, we also forgot to mention that if you want to turn on the lights in the front, you're just gonna press this plus button here and hold that down. And that is gonna turn the lights on. Now we don't get an indicator up here that the lights are on, but you know, if you were in the nighttime, you'd be able to tell that the, uh, the light is on. So no indicator here on the screen, but that is how you turn the lights on. You hold it down again. Now the lights are off. All right, so that is the lights and the walk mode. Let's go ahead and put a helmet on and take this thing out for a test ride. One of the things I forgot to mention in the walk around was I really liked the packaging that all the accessories came with. So this thing has the charger and charging cable. It had the pedals, a multi-tool, and the owner's manual and the front light. And they were all in this separate package, but it was packaged really, really well. And I would just like to highlight that. So when you receive it, it's all real nice, real protected. And I just wanted to point that out as a plus. All right, guys, we are back here in the neighborhoods and we're gonna be doing a ride test on the KBO Breeze. So let's test this out as if it were just a regular old bike, put it in acoustic mode and let's see how the shifting is and just kind of the pedal geometry as we're using the bike. So. We've got it in first gear over here, and we have pedal assist turned off. So let's let's get it. Very smooth, easy, nice to pedal. Let's see. Get into second gear. Nice shift. I like the ratio there. Go ahead and stop here. Got to be safe, guys. Always got to be safe. All right. And let's pop it a third. Very nice. And fourth. Easy shift. Fifth. Another easy shift. Sixth. And finally seventh. All those shifts were fairly smooth. I mean, you could still there, you could still feel a little bit of a pop, pop in between each shift there, but it felt solid, like there wasn't any skipping or anything like that. So that's nice. Another thing I like is that on this bike, even though we're not using the motor right now, it's still going to tell us how fast we're going. Um, some bikes don't do that, so it's really cool to see that included here on the uh, on the breeze. All right, let's go ahead and. 
test out the pedal assist. So we'll put it in pedal assist level one. And we start pedaling. We get about, that was even less than half rotation. A little less than half rotation uh, before the motor kicks in, so that is nice. And pedal assist level one is gonna take us right to that 11 mile an hour mark. Let's hit pedal assist level two. Kicking right in. I'm not trying to change my cadence at all. I'll keep those kind of the same. Right about that 14 mile an hour mark. And three. It takes us to about 17 mile an hour mark. And four. Gonna take us to that 20 mile an hour, 21 mile an hour mark. Let's see, let's try Pell Assist level five. So we're getting up to uh, right about that 22 mile an hour. I believe it's listed with a top speed of 20, so 21, 22, just a little bit above that. One thing that I do like, so we don't get a wattage readout on this particular screen. However, there's this little gauge over here that shows us how much power the motor is actually sending to the bike. So, you know, not that that's super accurate for us to do any sort of calculations or anything. Look at the efficiency of the batter. But it is nice that uh, we have some indication to let us know how much work the engine back there is doing, even if it's just, you know, just a rough estimate. And as far as the ride goes, it is, uh, it's fairly smooth. Those bigger tires with the, uh, with the front forks here are really cushioning a lot of the, uh, bumps. Now, granted, we're not going over anything too crazy, but, you know, you hit a couple bumps and some cracks and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, all in all, it's fairly, fairly smooth. We've got our nice upward riding position. Looking down here at this bottle cage boss, I feel like that's actually a pretty solid spot to put a bike. Um, if the standover height obviously wasn't an issue for you, just reaching right down here, snagging it. That is pretty, pretty sweet. See how the balance is on this thing? Look at that, no hands, mom. I can ride my bike with no handlebars. No handlebars, no handlebars. Do a little bit of a turn here. Okay, okay. That is sweet. So a lot, easy, super easy to balance, super easy to ride. I gotta use the, uh, the brake levers here. That is cool. All right, so let's go ahead and pull over and let's test out the throttle. So like we mentioned in the overview, the throttle can be used as long as you are in pedal assist level one through five. So if you have it on pedal assist level zero, that is gonna be the safety for the twist throttle here. Now, as soon as we put it into just pedal assist level one, um, we still get the full power out of the throttle. So that's sweet. So let's go ahead and test it out from a stop here. fairly zippy a very even uniform acceleration always got to be safe all right here we go let's see what the top speed on this thing is going to be when i was riding around earlier i was getting right around that 21 mile an hour mark so let's see uh let's see what we can get it up to So right when it's kind of sustained above that 21, 22 miles per hour, it uh, it kicks off. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't just completely kick off. It just slowly gives it a little bit less power and just hovers me right around that uh, 21, 22 miles per hour. Nice 
right, sweet. All right, we got a speed bump over here. Let's go ahead and hit this speed bump. Not necessarily gonna try to get any air on it, but let's see what happens. Very nice. Now let's see what happens if we try to get a little bit of air on here. I got a little bit of air, kind of went up a little bit, came down the other side of the speed bump there. Now this is not a bike that uh, you would necessarily want to take um, out there jumping around on uh, jumps. You know, as we mentioned, this is a cruising style, commuter style bike. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily worry about how good this thing jumps or not. I'm very impressed with the balance of this bike. Sometimes you get, we get an e-bike and it's just a little bit harder to balance. Uh, but this, for me, this is one of the easiest bikes I've ever ridden and balanced with no hands. Let's do the rest of the view with no hands. Just when you guys thought that my hands were gonna be busy and I wouldn't be able to talk with them, you were wrong. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we tested out the motor. We walked through all the gears. Let's go and try some braking on this bad boy. Now, one thing I did notice when I was riding around earlier is the back wheel is very on point. So it's very easy to skid with it, um, at least the way that it's set up. Now, obviously, you know, with the, the brake calipers, that's always something you could jack around with and make better. Let's pop up here so we don't die. Gave us the wave of love there. All right. So like I said, let's go ahead and do a braking test on here. Now I'm not gonna be just slamming on the brakes like normal just because I know that back tire is gonna skid. So let's go ahead and do a braking test to where we would wanna stop, not lose control, you know, not skid out at all. Going about 22 miles an hour and let's brake. All right, right about that 11, 12, 13 foot mark. You know, I do this enough, I should have a, uh, a street to go out there, maybe measure some trees, because they're all, you know, estimations in the, uh, in the stopping area there. Maybe we get a little bit more scientific with it in the future. All right, let's go ahead and do one more. Again, we're sitting around that, you know, 12, 13 foot mark. Let's go ahead and uh, let's not worry about the skidding. Let's just uh, let's just hammer down and see what happens. Okay, going to about that uh, 22 mile an hour mark. Get away from the BMW. There you go. All right. Yeah, you know that was actually even a little bit quicker. Maybe about the uh, the nine ten foot mark there. Now we did skid a little bit, and so I would recommend if all of the breezes come with the brakes, you know, that tight, then I would recommend uh, maybe looking at that, adjusting it so it stops safely. Um, because if you really do have your brakes going down, especially if you're dealing with any sort of like loose gravel or anything, um, you may be able to uh, kind of fishtail out there a little bit, which you would probably want to avoid. All right, guys, I think that pretty much covers uh, everything that we normally do around here. Um, some final thoughts from me uh, would be that um, the bike is very well balanced, um, performs well, it's very sensitive, um, and not overly sensitive. I feel like it's the sort of right sensitivity as far as the throttle and the pedal assist goes. And the way that the motor eases off when you stop using it, I think that's really nice because there's some bikes where you will be going with you know the motor and everything's kind of going full tilt and then when you let off and it stops it almost like thrusts you forward and you're like oh no but with this bike i feel like though there you can feel like okay the engine's not working anymore it definitely gives you a little bit of kind of relaxes you into the stop or to the, the non-use of the motor so i like that you know all in all a very quality bike for the price yeah, honestly, I'm, uh, 
I'm very impressed with that. I'm very impressed with that. And guys, I think that is going to do it for us. So if you got any questions, please let me know in the comments. As always, love talking to you guys. I'll have a link to uh, KBO's website down below. So if you want to check them out, look at uh, you know this one. Like I said, they've got that orange color. They also have the step, the step through model. Um, yeah, I love talking to you guys and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.